in mesmerizing growth and transfer problem. Friends, today firstly we will begin with mesmerizing growth. Let me introduce you to the topic. Mesmerizing growth is a theoretical situation first proposed by famous economist Jagdish Bhagwati in 1958, where he proposed economic growth could result in a country being worse off than before the growth. If growth is heavily export biased, it might lead to a fall in the terms of trade of the exporting country. In rare circumstances, this fall in the terms of trade may be so large as to outweigh the gains from growth. If so, this situation would cause a country to be worse off after growth than before. This result is only valid if the growing country is able to influence world prices. Another economist, Harry G. Johnson, had independently worked out conditions for this result in 1955. Friends, now let us look at some conditions that must be satisfied for a country to experience immeasurizing growth. Number 1. Its growth should be characterized by a more than proportionate increase in the production of its export commodity. Number 2. The supply of its export commodity should be price inelastic so that it is willing to export more even at reduced price. Number 3. The share of its export commodity in the total supply in international markets should be large enough to depress its international price. This condition applies irrespective of whether the country in question is large or small or whether it is rich or poor. It is seen that developing countries are more prone to suffering from deterioration in terms of trade with an expansion in their exports. This is because a major portion of their exports comprise mainly minerals and other primary products which tend to have inelastic demand in the developed countries. In addition, the developed countries have been able to create synthetic substitutes for a number of these products. Friends, now let us look at another issue popularly known as the transfer problem. Let me introduce you to the transfer problem. Transfer problem refers to the international transfers of income from the debtor country to the creditor country. Such transfer of income is also called real transfers because the debtor country repays interests and capital in terms of goods and services, which are real resources, to the creditor's country. In general terms, so to speak, it refers to the effect of transfer of income on the donor's terms of trade. The reversal of capital flows force countries to go from a current account deficit to a current account surplus. In the past, transfer payments were in the form of reparation payments imposed by the victorious country over the vanquished country. For example, Germany demanded reparation payments from France after it won the Franco-Persian War in 1871 and the victorious allies imposed heavy reparation payments on Germany after World War I. In the present, the international debt crisis of the 1970s and 1980s and the Asian crisis of the 1990s have created transfer problems when the debtors less developed countries are required to service their debts, thereby leading to international transfers of income. The transfer problem was a subject of controversy in the 1920s between two famous economists Bertrand Olim and John Maynard Keynes over the reparation payments demanded of Germany by the Allies after World War I. The issue related to the burden of these payments on the German economy. In the present, the transfer problem is related to the burden of repayment of interest and loan on the debtor least developed countries. We discuss this issue in the light of the views of Ohlim and Keynes. Keynes pointed out that the reparation payments imposed on Germany by the Allies would not only place monetary burden 
but also a much larger real burden on Germany. Besides, the money transfer Germany would have to increase its exports and reduce its imports. For this, it would have to produce more exportable and reduce their price relative to imports. This would worsen the terms of trade of Germany and increase the direct burden of its reparation payments. Also, according to Keynes, the settlement of reparation due from Germany raises not only a budget problem but also a transfer problem because the expenditure of the German people must be reduced not only by the amount of the reparation taxes which they must pay out of their earnings but also by a reduction in their gold rate of earnings below what they would otherwise be. On the other hand, Olim argued that when Germany would increase payments, people would reduce the demand for imported goods. When money would be transferred to the allied countries, their purchasing power would increase and a portion of it would be spent on German goods. Thus, there would be reduction in imports and increase in exports of Germany without worsening its terms of trade. Now friends, let us look at other views in the transfer problem. We will discuss in detail the present transfer problem of less developed countries in the light of the above views. First, let us consider the view of Olim, the Olim view. Taking Olim's view first, when the debtor country levies taxes on the people to repay the interest and loan, their incomes are reduced. Their demand will partly decline for domestic goods and partly for imported goods. The diminution in demand for domestic goods will increase the quantity of these goods available for export. Thus, with reduction in imports and increase in exports, the terms of trade of the less developed countries will not worsen. This is the direct effect of the transfer problem. Besides, Olin also explains an indirect effect of money transfer. When the debtor country repays its debt with the reduction in purchasing power, the demand for domestic goods and imports falls. This shifts a part of the factors of production from domestic goods industries to export industries. Consequently, exports increase and imports fall. Further, the prices of domestic goods fall due to decline in demand for them. So far as the prices of exports are concerned, the extent to which they are low depends upon the relative prices of exports of the data and creditor countries and the direction of change in demand for them. It is therefore not possible to determine whether the terms of trade will be against or in favor of the debtor country. Olim's analysis is unrealistic in the present context of less developed countries because it considers only the income effect of the debt repayment and is based on the assumption of full employment in both the debtor and creditor countries. It also neglects the elasticities of demand and supply for exports. Now friends, we will have a look at the modern view of it. The modern view is an extension of Keynesian analysis of the burden of reparation payments. It has two aspects of the transfer problem. The first is what Keynes called the pure transfer problem. When the country's resources are turned into foreign exchange for the repayment of debt, this is the external transfer problem. The second is the budgetary problem. When the government acquires domestic resources for debt servicing, this is called the internal transfer problem. The external transfer problem is how to raise net exports of goods and services to meet debt repayments. When a debtor or so as borrower country makes the repayment of debt, it not only transfers money to the creditor or so to say lender country but also pure or real resources. The real transfer burden is the creation of export surplus in order to acquire the foreign exchange of the lender country. This requires reduction in imports 
and an increase in exports country. In order to export more, the borrowing country will have to reduce the prices of its exports relative to its imports. This will lead to worsening of its terms of trade in relation to the lending country. But there is no guarantee that the rise in exports will increase the export earnings if the volume of exports does not rise in proportion to the fall in prices. This is a common problem with the debtor less developed countries that compete with each other for exporting goods to the creditor developed countries. As a result, competitive price reductions keep their export earnings unchanged. They therefore reduce the consumption of import goods so that the export surplus is increased. This is at the cost of reduction in their consumption level which is already very low. This entails a real burden of transfer on the debtor countries. On the other hand, if the total trade between the debtor and the creditor countries is static, increased export of goods of the former will reduce the imports of goods of the later, thereby slowing down production in the creditor country. Consequently, its industries will suffer with the generation of export surplus in the debtor country. Thus, the terms of trade of the debtor country will not worsen. It is the creditor country that will suffer due to transfer. This was Keynes' view of the German reparation transfer problem. Friends, now let us have a look at the effect of these issues on the terms of trade. When a debtor country repays its debt, it transfers a part of its income to the lender country. This process of transfer reduces income and expenditure in the former country and correspondingly increases income and expenditure in the later country. These changes in income and expenditure in the two countries may change the relative demand for goods in the two countries and thus affect their terms of trade. The effect of a transfer of income is only the relative demand and not on the relative supply of goods if physical resources are not being transferred. The direction of terms of trade will affect will depend upon the marginal propensity to spend on two goods A and B by the two countries. Suppose the debtor country's marginal propensity to spend on its export commodity A is higher than that on B. Given the relative prices of A and B, the transfer of income by the debtor country to the creditor country reduces its demand for A and increases it for B. This reduction in relative demand for A lowers its relative price in relation to B. This reduction in demand and price of A worsens the terms of trade of the debtor country in relation to the creditor country. On the contrary, if the marginal propensity to spend on export commodity A by the debtor country is relatively lower, the transfer of income will improve its terms of trade. In general, then if the debtor country has a lower marginal propensity to spend on its export good, the transfer of income improve its terms of trade. If it has a higher marginal propensity to spend on its export good, its terms of trade will worsen. The opposite will be the terms of trade effect on the lender country. The effect of a transfer on the terms of trade of a debtor country is illustrated in this figure. The curve D is the demand curve for good A relative to good B. S is the given supply curve. The higher marginal propensity to spend on the export good A relative to B with transfer of income to the creditor country reduces its demand for A. This is shown by the leftward shift of the D curve to D1. The new equilibrium is at E1. The relative quantity of A has fallen from OQ to OQ1 and its relative price from OP to OP1. This shows worsening of its terms of trade. On the other hand, if the debtor country has a lower marginal propensity to spend on A, the transfer of income to the creditor country 
would raise and shift the relative demand curve to the right from D to D2 and increase the relative price of A from OP to OP2 and the relative quantity of A has increased from OQ to OQ2. This shows improvement in the terms of trade. To take the budgetary aspect of the external transfer problem of the debtor country, it requires some type of expenditure reducing policies such as exchange rate depreciation, cutting fiscal deficits or direct control. These policies reduce imports and increase the debtor country's exports thereby generating export surplus which is used for repayment of debts. So far as the internal aspect of the transfer problem is concerned, it involves cut in the expenditure and increase in revenues. If the reduction in public expenditures and increase in revenues are not carried out through budgetary policies, inflation results which makes it difficult to repay the debt. For high inflation reduces the marginal propensity to save and invest in an less developed countries. Exports are reduced and imports rise. Fiscal deficit increases which leads both to a crowding out of private investment and to cut in government expenditures that reduce public investment. Under the circumstances an less developed countries can solve its transfer problem of debt repayment by controlling inflation, increasing exports and reducing imports through various external and internal policy measures. Friends, now let us summarize today's session. We will begin by summarizing immeasurizing growth. The concept of immeasurizing growth introduced by famous professor Jagdish Bhagwati refers to that situation where an increase in a country's export commodity leads to such deterioration in its terms of trade that there is a net decline in its export earnings and social welfare. By transferring resources from one country to another, the goal is generally to make the receiving country better off. It follows from the theorem that quirks in the market mechanism render that goal impossible to achieve the equilibrium. Now friends, let me summarize the transfer problem issue. In the past, transfer payments were in the form of restitution payments imposed by the winning or conquering country over the repressed country. Nowadays, the transfer problem controversy is very much alive in the context of the ongoing debate on current account rebalancing at both regional and global levels. While there is a considerably uncertainty about the timing and drivers of current account movements, the basic mechanism of adjustment requires a transfer of real resources from debtor countries to surplus countries. Such transfer involves a decrease in domestic spending relative to production in the debtor countries, accompanied by a simultaneous relative increase abroad. From the perspective of comparative statistic, it is noteworthy that the transfer problem can be observed only for sufficiently large volumes of trade. Thank you friends.